What's up guys? Igor Hernandez here. Let's talk trial. Today I want to talk to you about the idea of having a purpose in mind when you conduct an examination for witness. I was watching the trials, actually a, a pretty big trial down here now in terms of the severity of what's at stake and what the jury will have to decide and I was watching it because one of, one of the people tried, it's a buddy of mine and I saw, I, you know, I was in court, I had some free time, I decided to go in and see what what's going on like I typically do every time that I have some free time if I see there's a trial going on I like to see some of it, that's just kind of part of my part of my routine I guess in terms of getting better and, and staying sharp but anyway so I go see it um, and what I see is that there's a the examination of a forensic witness basically a DNA analyst and the DNA person is supposed to explain you know like this is what we got and we tested it or didn't test it or whatever and so the guy doing the the examination is actually a guy I know too and I like the guy you know and he's actually a pretty good lawyer and, and what he did in the examination was pretty good overall you know he had a good pace he had a good tone he had a good voice good presentation the content was pretty good with the exception of a part of it and that's really what prompted me to think about this video for you guys and that is so in, in a criminal case, sometimes they have DNA that they tested and it comes back to the defendant or somebody else. Or sometimes they have items that you may have gotten DNA from, but for whatever reason, there's different variables that come into play. For whatever reason, the DNA was not collected or was not tested or, you know, there's no DNA that comes back to anybody, right? So what the government likes to do is they like to put the witness on to say, yeah, you know, I'm a DNA analyst, I worked for the lab, I received samples for this crime scene, but I was not able to collect any DNA that was valid, valuable, uh, there was nothing that matched anybody, because either the sample was degraded or, you know, many different factors. But anyway, the point is, you put somebody before the jury who's going to say, we tried, we couldn't get any, and here's why we couldn't get any, and it's not that we don't care, it's just life, right? Perfect. Uh, nothing wrong with that strategy, in fact, that, that may be effective in some cases, it may not be effective in other cases, but that's not what we're talking about today. What I want to talk to you guys about today is the execution. So, they put the DNA person on, and they ask the DNA person a whole slew of questions about DNA. What it is, how it works, when you test it, how you know the testing process is carried out, um, when you have a match, what the match means, the probabilities, the statistics, as far as like cross-contamination in the lab, if the lab is, is good for cross-contamination, if, if it has measures in place to avoid cross-contamination, um, you know, how samples are gathered, how samples are tested, like this whole, it was a line of questioning talking about the whole idea of DNA sampling and the way it was put forth, I was sitting there thinking, oh man, they got DNA in this case that matches the defendant. Because it was a big buildup of the sampling and how it works and when you get it and how you get it and how she tested. And, and it was a big buildup that basically, in, in the reasonable conclusion would have been like, okay, this is all legit. Now I'm going to tell you what my match is. So I'm telling you how legit the testing process is so that you know when I tell you this is a match, it is a match, right? But then it turns out that they did not have DNA. So they go through that whole slew of questions about the quality of the sampling and when you have a match and how you have a match and all that kind of stuff. And then at the end, you do not have even a sample that was valuable for any testing. So it was a bit of a letdown. And the reason I bring this up is because that was a very good standard DNA direct examination for a case that has DNA because you do the buildup and then you say here's the DNA it matches the guy and you know it's legit because of the buildup that we just did in this case though the way I see it if you know what your goal is which is just to show the jury that you tried and you couldn't get any the only real things you should be concentrating on is the number one the experience gathering those samples what they did in this case to try to get that sample the fact that they did not get a sample the reasons why you don't get a sample and how sure they are that 
basically the materials that they gather were not able to be tested for DNA for whatever reason, and then basically just sit down. So you skip kind of the build up that suggests that there's a valid sample out there that you will present to the jury, and you go straight to, look, we tried, we couldn't get it, and this is how we know that you really tried, that we really tried, and this is how you know that our methods are actually good enough to where if, if we had if we had it, a valid sample we would have gotten it. And the only reason we don't have it is because it's not there. So I guess the, the point of this video is to say every time that you're gonna put a witness on the stand, think about why you're asking the questions that you're asking. You know, like why what reason, let's say in this case, why would you want to ask about statistical probabilities of matches and things of that nature when you don't even have a sample to compare? Statistical, statistical probabilities don't matter unless you have a sample to compare, at which point you're saying, well, this sample matches that sample, and it's one in like eight quintillion or whatever the hell the number is these days. Uh, otherwise, you're just kind of putting a seed in the jury's mind that, oh, there is a sample that they were able to match, and it's coming. And when it does not come, then they're just kind of sitting there wondering like, well, what the hell was all that about you know so anyway guys that's uh it for today i'll catch you again next time